Well, good morning. Welcome in to another Power Hour. It is Chris Logan. Today is Tuesday, December 3rd. Ready to get to some of the headlines today? Got a lot to get to on the show. Plenty to get to on the show today. Thank you for watching. If you're watching this morning, we, we are on my Chris Logan Facebook page. We are on my Listen to the Planet Facebook page, and we are in the Chris Logan in the Morning Planet Power Hour group live there. If you're listening on the planet, thank you. If you're watching this morning, share it on social media. I would appreciate that. If you're listening this morning, make sure, when it, make sure to tell someone about the planet today, your online home for 90s and 2000s rock. Also, we have our YouTube channel. The Planet Power Hour with Chris Logan. You can go back and watch episodes there. Got our Spotify up. Got our Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. So if you want to go and subscribe to all that stuff, you can. And I would appreciate it. Kind of getting things going in 2023. Can't believe it's still 2023, man. Crazy, right? So hope you're having a great start to the new year. Comment if you feel like it on our comment section on Facebook. Sometimes I can see you, and sometimes I can't, depending on how and where you comment. But if you do comment, I'll, I'll give you a little shout-out this morning. Also wanted to give a shout-out to Motor City, 1111 North University in Lafayette for powering the morning show and powering our Planet Power Hour. They're at 1111 North University in Lafayette, MotorCityLA.com. And we got a brand new galactic sponsor on the planet, energizing our entire planet, the Bee King. It's Mardi Gras time. We're done with Christmas, done with New Year. It's Mardi Gras time now. And thanks to Craig, the Bee King, his original location, Bee Busters and Float Rentals in Youngsville, and his new location, Beads Galore and More on Cameron Street in Lafayette. Because Craig likes to go big. The Bead King likes to go huge. And he says two stores are better than one. So got to say thanks to him for powering the planet this Mardi Gras season. You know, but obviously the biggest headline today is DeMar Hamlin. The Buffalo Bills football player suffered cardiac arrest last night on the field. Very kind of surreal situation. I was watching the game and then my my cable box ended up like going out right after the hit and right around the time they were giving him medical attention on the field. So I had to wait for my cable box to reboot to come back on and that took a few minutes but man just a a sad surreal situation to, to um see that young man on the field. Um, different reports today. There is an official report. Last night, there, were, there was a few reports on Twitter. There was some guy saying he was the marketing rep for DeMar Hamlin, and he was saying that he was in stable condition. But this is the official release from the Buffalo Bills, and they released this at about 1 o'clock this morning. And they say, if you're watching along, you can see it on the screen. DeMar Hamlin suffered a card cardiac arrest following a hit in our game versus the Bengals. His heartbeat was restored on the field, and he was transferred to the UC Medical Center for further testing and treatment. He is currently sedated and listed in critical condition. Um, a lot of people sending out their prayers for a speedy recovery via Twitter. Um, if you're watching, this is a logo someone did. It's the Buffalo Bills logo, but then the, um, there's a part of it that's in the Bengals colors. Um, but, man, so much. It's like last night, just social media was all about DeMar Hamlin. Justin, good morning, man. He says, always enjoy the power hour. I appreciate you listening, man, or I, or I appreciate you watching. Um, this is also a tweet yesterday, or I guess last night. All morning long, we've seen no nothing but community support for DeMar Hamlin 
football fans from across the country offering up well wishes. We are praying for a recovery. And hopefully DeMar does make a full recovery. This was also um, uh, another tweet. I, and I saw this on TikTok last night. I was kind of looking for, you know, for his account and, you know, see what was going on. And this, this is from Dynasty Pros. Their Twitter account says, let's take a break and watch a clip of DeMar Hamlin giving his family some love just prior to a game. And I, I don't, this, I don't, this was not the game last night, but this is a previous video of him just coming to the sidelines and, you know, telling his family what's up. Obviously very supportive. Uh, De DeMar got to play. He was considered one of the, the best DBs coming out of Pitt. And DeMar Hamlin was able to get onto the field after an injury to NFL great Micah High. But... You know, looking at some of his clips, guy play the guy plays hard, the guy plays fast. Um, and and that hit, which if you look at it, if you look at the hit in real time, it didn't really seem that bad. And but it was a direct hit to his chest. And you know, the video last night, you see him getting up. After the hit, kind of woozy, and then just falls right back down. But a, a lot, a lot of tweets. Um, you know, there's even some vaccine tweets going on as well. Yeah, I, this morning I, I really don't want to get into that. You know, but but there there's a lot of that on on social media this morning. Uh, Skip Bayless also going viral today. Now, he, he tweeted a few times yesterday, or I should say last night. This is the one that he's going viral for. No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how? Question mark. This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome. Dot, 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 which suddenly seems so irrelevant. And, and people are after him for that. Seems very insensitive, I guess would be the right word. And he comes back and says that, let's see, let's see if it'll pull up on the, on the screen. Now, he's the host of Undisputed on ESPN. But he comes back like an hour later. See, he posted the one about no doubt they're considering postponing the game 11 hours ago, then about 10 hours ago. Nothing is more important than that young man's health. That was the point of my last tweet. I'm sorry if that was misunderstood, but his health is all that matters. Again, everything is irrelevant. I prayed for him and will continue to. So a few tweets from Skip Bayless last night, and he's getting a lot of heat for that one. Which that one there, it, it the tweet that he's getting heat for, it, it's just very, it's not written well. And if he didn't mean it to be insensitive, he 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 wrote it in the wrong way. No doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how? This late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, which suddenly seems so irrelevant. So it seems like he's saying that, but then he's coming back saying that the fact that it's a regular season game, it was a huge game last night, big hype, you know, AFC game, and then he says suddenly seems so irrelevant. But still, you know, not really the tweet to, to send out last night. Uh, beads galore and more. That's the bead king powering the planet. Mentioned him earlier. Says good morning. And CJ Tennant, thanks for the comment. He says Ken Blocks passing away was not what I wanted to wake up to today. Yeah, and that was going last night, spreading on social media. We'll we'll get to that this morning too. Um, and then also I, I saw this story. Fox News had it and. Look, it was just one of those situations last night on Monday Night Football. And, and you could see Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, they didn't know what to say. They were cutting back to 
uh, what's her name? I can't think of her name. Is it Andrea? I don't know. And Ian Rappaport and Booger McFarlane in the studio. Then they were coming, you know, back to the field and, and they just didn't know what to do. They didn't know what, what to say. And if you were watching the game last night, you saw that or heard that the NFL was giving the teams five minutes to kind of gather themselves and make their way back out to the field. Now this morning, the NFL says that that was ridiculous. They did not say that at all. Believe them? I mean, I, I don't know. To me, if, you know, uh, uh, again, it's a live broadcast on Monday Night Football. If the NFL did not give them five minutes to gather themselves in the locker room and come back out on the field, you think they would have corrected that in the booth. But again, a situation that the NFL has never been in. Ambulances have been on the field, but not like this. No one has been worked on on the field. But NFL executive Troy Vincent said there was no five-minute warm-up given to the Bills and Bengals to get ready to resume playing. Troy Vincent says, quote, it never crossed our mind to talk about warming up to resume play. That's ridiculous, that's insensitive, and that's uh, not a place we should ever be in. But there, there should have been some more communication. You know, even they hadn't made an announcement, but then the cameras are showing the Bills equipment staff coming out on the field and gathering their informa uh, information, gathering their equipment and bringing it back, you know, to the, to the locker rooms and probably, you know, loading it up to transport it back. But, you know, last night, it was one of those situations that for me, you know, and, and I'm not really comparing it to anything, but I remember watching the WWE, I think it was the Over the Edge pay-per-view back in 1999 where Owen Hart lost his life. And it was that kind of situation. We were watching that pay-per-view and then the, the screen kind of goes black and then they have just an audience shot and you can tell, you know, the audience is shocked. Jim Ross doesn't really know what to say. And Owen Hart was the blue blazer. He had an accident and he was supposed to be lowered into the ring and had an accident. The harness broke. I forgot, you know, what was what was the um what the investigation showed, but he fell and blunt force trauma. And he passed away in the in the ring. And then, but the pay-per-view went on. And Vince McMahon caught some heat for that. They looked at it as the, the show must go on. But it, it kind of took me back to that situation back in 1999. And then kind of took me back to 1990 when Hank Gathers passed away on the field. Now, Hank Gathers was a player for uh, Loyola Marymount. And he had some heart issues had passed out before, had some issues before, was given some medicine, wasn't taking that medicine, and he fell on the court and died right there. I think it was during the, hang on, I pulled up a story about that. They were in, they were in their, their conference tournament, if I remember right. Yeah, the West Coast Conference Tournament. And Hank Gather sprints down the court. Leaps, catches an alley-oop pass, slams down a dunk, jogging back midcourt, collapses. And in that situation, and I'm reading this from history.com, the tournament, the game and the tournament were canceled, and Loyola Marymount was awarded the conference automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. So I'm not sure what's going to happen or if that game's going to be replayed. Um, but, I mean, that had to be something to see. it, And then you could see, as you were watching the game last night, or if you watch some videos today, that, you know, those players made that shield surrounding DeMar Hamlin as, as they were working on him on the field. So they were there watching them try to bring this, this young man back.
and you can see a lot of them crying, you know, shock on their on their faces. But you know, didn't seem like a, a huge hit at at first. And watch, I'm going to I I I didn't I didn't really want to play this this morning, you know, because I kind of didn't want to play the video. You can you can see it online. Um. John says, I, ha- I once had a 30, 40 minute injury delay during a high school football game, neck injury, and we had to wait for the ambulance to get there. At a high school level, won't discovery the injuries in details. It was pretty difficult call, you know, to, to be there in that situation. But yeah, it's, it's, you know, when you're, when you're broadcasting and you're doing that, you're not sure what to do, you're not sure what to say, probably not in, you know, not given much information, but ESPN stayed with it the whole entire time. And, you know, even with some tweets that were coming out, ESPN last night didn't make any assumptions on what was happening with DeMar Hamlin. But this video here, I I saw it on Twitter last night, or I saw it on, uh, sorry, TikTok last night. And I know there's some people saying that, there was another reason this this young man passed away. And again, you're not going to get in it. Or not, I, I said that wrong. Didn't pass away. A young man passed out, collapsed on the field. But there was a video that slowed down that hit. And if you're watching this morning, you'll see it. Higgins puts his shoulder down. And, I mean, it it's a direct hit to the heart, to the chest area on DeMar Hamlin. And, and if you see it here, he, he, he folds like forward, just boom. And that's, and then he wrapped him up and fell down. But I mean, it is a direct hit to the chest of, of DeMar Hamlin. If you're, if you're watching right now, you just, I mean, just kind of folds him forward. He, he took the entire hit from Higgins there. This one's a, a little bit closer. You can see Higgins running across the field. DeMar Hamlin coming across. And he Higgins lowers his shoulder. And then, boom. Just, I mean, just direct shoulder in, into his chest. Blunt force trauma? I mean, I guess we do have to say that. I remember there was an old story of the um, at the school I went to in Church Point that many, many years back, uh, there was a kid that got hit in the chest with a baseball. They were playing baseball at school, and this was probably, I don't know, either in the 60s or 70s. I was there in the 80s, and um, we couldn't play baseball. At school, we had to play with a softball, and we never knew the reason why. And there was a kid that got that got killed, it's like similar to this. The uh, baseball hit him in the chest, and um, and he passed away. And that, and we could, we never understood why we couldn't play baseball, and we had to play softball, and and that was the reason why. Crazy. Blaze says, "Super crazy weekend, super crazy start to 2023. Very crazy start to 2023." You know, and and if there may be some people that are are giving other reasons for Demar Hamlin passing away that may not have seen the game, may not have been watching the game, may not have seen that replay, don't know. But hopefully, everything's okay. Uh, it seems like like some tweets that he is a little bit better. Hopefully, he he makes it out. Um. When is that game going to be replayed? Is it going to be replayed? Let's not hope for the worst case scenario because then it would be tough for those Bills players, even the Bengals players, to get back on the field. It's um man, just it was it was a, a very surreal moment last night. Um also in other news too, and CJ commented this morning. And brought this up, but Ken Block died in a snowmobile accident. 
He uh, had the accident in Utah. He was 55 years old. A statement was initially released by Blocks Hoonigan Industries that confirmed the news. They say, quote, it's with our deepest regrets that we can confirm that Ken Block passed away in a snowmobile accident today. Ken was a visionary, pioneer, and icon. Most importantly, a father and husband. He will be incredibly missed. Rally car driver began back in 2005. The Gymkhana videos, you know, lots of view, uh, views on his, on his content, co-founder of DC Shoes, um, you know, the race and looking at some, some pictures right now, but a statement from the Wasatch County Sheriff's Office said on January 2nd, 2023, at a plot, approximately 2 p.m., the Wasatch County 911 Center Call reporting a snowmobile accident in the Mill Hollow area. Search and rescue, along with law enforcement from Wasatch County Sheriff's Office, Utah, responded. And they say the driver, Kenneth Block, 55, out of Park City, Utah, was riding a snowmobile on a steep slope when the snowmobile upended, landing on top of him. He was pronounced deceased at the scene from injuries sustained uh, at, at the accident or, or in the accident. So, man, prayers to um, Ken Block's family. And then I didn't really see this. I think I got a notification that had came came out uh, maybe yesterday, day before yesterday. No, it must have been yesterday. But Jeremy Renner, Hawkeye, as you may know him, had surgery after a snowplow accident. Was in critical but stable condition in a Nevada hospital yesterday. And he suffered a traumatic injury while plowing snow. That's according to his publicist. So hopefully um, he is okay. And, and he makes it out as well. And yesterday, um, this story came out after we, well, not really a story. It came out, but the update came out after we wrapped up the show, but a the police officer involved in the chase that left two teen girls dead in Addis is now facing criminal charges. He was arrested. This is from KATC.com. They say that WBRZ reporting that an Addis police officer is facing criminal charges after striking and killing two, te two teenage girls during a high-speed chase of a suspect on Saturday. That's according to DA Tony Clayton. The officer's name, David Cawthorn, or, or Cawthorn, age 42, arrested and booked Sunday night on two counts of negligent homicide. Jail officials say he's being held on a $100,000 bond, and he was still in jail as of yesterday morning. A lot of questions, according to the DA, pertaining to his speed and negligence. And the DA says the public can be rest assured we will follow the facts. And the police unit struck the victim's car, pushing it into the median of the highway. Two of the occupants, 17-year-old Maggie Dunn and 16-year-old Caroline Gill, were pronounced dead. A third victim, Maggie's teenage brother, was taken to the hospital, and he is in critical condition. Investigators uh, reviewed the dash camera footage, along with other footage from the crash, before deciding to arrest Cawthorn. He joined the Addis Police back in February of 2022 and previously worked for the Point Compete Parish Sheriff's Office. If you want to read more on that, go to katc.com, wbrz.com out of Baton Rouge. They have more information about that. But, man, sad start for, for that the family of those, those young girls. Also had some football yesterday. LSU dominated Purdue. And I, I think everyone saw that coming. Everyone saw the win. And, but, I mean, what was the final score? Like, like 60, uh, 63 to 7. Look, and, and we talked about this yesterday. Purdue was depleted. Their head coach wasn't there. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more coming up later in the show, but you know, Drew Brees, he was there. He didn't help. He probably wanted to bow out at halftime. He probably was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go coach my sons. But, you know, it's not that Drew Brees was, you know, the head coach or anything. But 
Purdue looked bad. Now, look, they fell apart after they were given their bid to the Citrus Bowl in, in their defense. They put up a pretty decent fight against Michigan in the Big Ten championship game. But that, I mean, that was, that was bad yesterday. And there's also, I'll share with you, there was this video from a, from a very happy LSU fan. Check this video out. You get your asses kicked by the University of LSU. Go Tigers. This dude's a huge LSU fan. His TikTok account is Jason underscore LSU. But what got me, Purdue, you got beat by the University of Louisiana State University. And it could have been a mistake by this guy. It, it very well could have been. You got beat by the University of Louisiana State University. See, sometimes when you hit record on TikTok, you make a mistake, you can hit stop, and you can do it again. He didn't do it again. But he said that Purdue, you got beat by the University of LSU. Hey, Purdue, what happened? You got your asses kicked by the University of LSU. Go Tigers. Hey, Purdue. And he, what and he gives the L. Go Tigers. The University of LSU. Happened. You got your asses kicked by the University of LSU. Go Tigers. Go Tigers at University of LSU. But we'll, we'll talk a little bit coming up. I've got a, like almost maybe an extended Planet Pigskin update. Things to look forward to in 2023. Or two this year. Uh, da, 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 Super Bowl 57, February 12th. If you dig Rihanna, Rihanna is going to be performing. The Women's World Cup this summer in New Zealand. Major League Baseball will have some new rules this season. I didn't know about this. When they start in late March, they're banning. Uh, they shift the players to a certain part of the field. New gadgets coming out this year. Apple and Samsung both have phones coming. Could be a big year for virtual reality. A new MetaQuest 3 headset from Oculus coming this fall. PlayStation has a new one coming. Apple is supposed to unveil its first VR headset sometime this year. A solar eclipse coming on October 14th. Parts of Oregon, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas will see the full thing. Uh, King Charles Coronation set for May 6th. Big TV shows coming back in 2023. Season four of You, The Mandalorian, Yellow Jackets, also Ted Lasso. I, I didn't I didn't watch Ted Lasso. I'm gonna have to watch Ted Lasso. Big movies coming this year. Oh, come on, man. Y'all not done with Magic Mike yet. Y'all are not done with Magic Mike. Magic Mike's last dance. <laughs> also, I hope it's his last dance. I mean, how much, how, how much more can Magic Mike dance? Also, there's a new Ant-Man movie coming out, Creed 3, Scream 6, and a new John Wick movie coming in March. Creed 3, look, Rocky, I love the Rocky series. Creed was good. Creed 2 was, was pretty good, too. But Creed 3, come on. Let's, let's talk about going, going that far with, with Creed. And then Scream 6. They're trying to beat out Friday the 13th. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3, Live Action, Little Mermaid, the 10th Fast and Furious movie. How far are they going to go with that? Uh, there's a Hunger Games prequel supposed to come out this fall. Dune Part 2, a new Exorcist movie. Aquaman, Jason Momoa is back. That should be coming out this fall. And then also this, too. 
Words that need to be banished this year. Let's see if you agree with these. Number 10, it is what it is. Eh. Yeah, I guess that one got to go. I mean, it is what it is, though. Number nine, absolutely. Okay. Number eight, irregardless. Number seven, does that make sense? I'm, I'm kind of guilty of you, does that make sense? Does, does that make sense? Number six is amazing. Okay. Number five, moving forward. Moving forward. Bah, 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 bah. Number four, gaslighting. Even though it was just named Merriam-Webster's Word of the Year for 2022. Gaslighting, yeah, that needs to go. Number three, quiet quitting. That one needs to go too. Number two, inflection point. I haven't really heard that too much last year. And according to this story, GOAT, G-O-A-T, as in greatest of all time, needs to go away. Do you agree with that? I do. Maybe damn Tom Brady can retire and GOAT will go away. But I mean, you talk, people talk GOAT, you know, for any long-standing, amazing, <laughs> which was one of the words that need to go away. You know, sports athlete, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, which one's the GOAT? For me, it's Michael Jordan. You know, Tom Brady, is he going to go down as the GOAT? Probably, even though, you know, or the GOAT just for now. Will someone surpass Tom Brady as the GOAT? Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, will there be someone else who kind of steps up as the GOAT? Also this morning, 2023 top baby names. This is what ec experts predict will be the top baby names this year. Billy with an I-E, not a Y. And I guess that would be like Billie Eilish. Also Wild, W-I-L-D-E, and Jolene. Top picks for girls. For boys, Archie, because of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's third son. Archie's supposed to be a hit for top baby names. Also, did you do New Year's resolutions? According to a recent study, study, Two in three people give up on their resolutions by January 31st. I kind of look at it a little bit different. Like, don't, you don't need the new year to make a change. You know, you don't need a new year to say, hey, I want to lose weight. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, I want to do that. Just kind of make that change anytime. But two out of three people quit by January 31st. Some of the top resolutions this year. Number five, lose some weight. Number four, eat better. Number three, work out more. Number two, be healthier in general. And number one, save money. What was your New Year resolution? I don't, I really don't have one. Pay down debt also on the list. Improve your mental health. Spend more time with family and learn something new. Some of the top 2023 New Year resolutions. So thanks for watching this morning. This is the Power Hour. We do it live on the planet. That's my online station for 90s and 2000s rock. Listen to theplanet.com is the website. You can go there and listen since we are exclusively online. You can download the app, App Store, Google Play, search for Listen to the Planet. Now, yesterday I searched for the planet in the App Store, and the app was one of the first ones that came up, which is, which is pretty cool. Because I told you yesterday, hang on, let me point that way. So you just got to look for that logo if you're watching this morning. And it was a little tough when I started the station because there were still planet radios around the country. That name wasn't exclusive to the station that we all know from here. Uh, there's still a nice number of planet radios in the country, some planet rocks. There's also some the planet um, when it comes to FM radio. So I had to get a little creative, and, and I went with Listen to the Planet. You know, I didn't want radio in the name because we're not on the radio per se. And so a lot of these other stations had app names and had domains and, and had Facebook pages. But Listen to the Planet is what we or I uh, took 
But if you just search the planet, not saying that you should if you don't have the app yet, search listen to the planet. But I searched the planet and we came up pretty high, probably because of all the, the downloads for that app compared to all the others. But thank you for that. Thanks for downloading. And if you're watching this morning on Facebook, watching on my Chris Logan page, listen to the planet page or in the Chris Logan Power Hour group, share it and make sure you watch or listen to the Power Hour every weekday morning. We do this at 8 o'clock, and we talk about the headlines and stories of the day. Want to bring this up. Now, I know why they I know why they won an award. Can't You can't tell me that this is not the reason that the Louisiana Float won the Showmanship Award in the Rose Parade. And no, no, it's not because of what the float looked like. I think... And it's only me. I think it was because who was on the float? Miss Badonka Donk herself, Lainey Wilson, was on that float. And when people got to look at her, they're like, oh, they, let's give them the, the win. But the Louisiana float won the Rose Parade's Showmanship Award yesterday. And, it, I mean, it, it's pretty cool. They called it the Celebration River Float. And on the float, they had 20 Louisiana Queens. The float was presented by Louisiana Travel. There was also a former patient of Shreveport Shriners Children's Hospital on the float. But if you're watching this morning, here it is. That's what it, lo that's what it looks like. An old riverboat. Very cool. Very cool. But also look at this. Entertaining the crowd and millions of people watching will be Baskin, Louisiana native and country superstar, Lainey Wilson. Yep, they got it because of her. I wonder if she had some tight pants on like she does when she's on stage. Last year's float, Louisiana's first in the Rose, Rose Parade's history, won the Wrigley Legacy Award for the most outstanding display of floral presentation, design, and entertainment. They're pretty cool looking, right? But Lainey Wilson might have might have sent him over the top. Who can we get? Ooh, Lainey Wilson's going viral. Let's get her on the let's get her on the on the float. And then also this too. Saw this this morning on ESPN.com. I didn't I didn't know or hear about this. Not sure if it's being swept under the rug or or what's actually going on. But Dana White from the UFC apologizes after a physical altercation with his wife. See if I can pull up the story. I don't know what it is with my with my Google Chrome on my MacBook Pro, but kind of freezing up every once in a while. But Dana White issued a public apology yesterday. Altercation, physical, between he and his wife, captured on video during their New Year's Eve celebration in Cabo. TMZ, of course, published that video, shows Dana White, his wife, Anne, in a VIP area of a nightclub. Dana White can be seen in the, in the video saying something to Anna White, at which point she slaps him in the face. They rang the bell, and Dana White then slaps her back before two men quickly separated them. So that match ended early. Dana White apologized and said there was, quote, no excuses for what happened. He went on to say, you heard me say over the years, there is never, ever an excuse for a guy to put his hands on a woman. And now here I am on TMZ talking about it. He says, my wife and I have been married for almost 30 years. We've known each other since we were 12 years old. We've obviously been through some S together. We've got three kids. He says, this is one of those situations that's horrible. I'm embarrassed, but it's kind of, it's also one of those situations that's that right now we're more concerned about our kids. We have three kids, and obviously since the video popped up, we've shown the kids the video, and we're more focused on family right now. He says, I'm not making any no excuses for this thing at all. It's never happened before, he says. It's the first time it's ever happened. People are going to say what they're going to say, and it is what it is. Whatever people say, I deserve. He says, I deserve it. Damn, Dana White, you're an idiot for slapping your wife in the club, Dan. He says he deserves it. 
But I mean, what was it? I mean, after 30 years of marriage, and, and they, they may have been arguing before. I, I don't know, but what was what was said to her that she slapped him and then he slapped her back? Don't know, but he's saying they're going to, um, you know, get through it as a family and uh, talk about it. She also, uh, his wife, Ann, also commented, says, Dana and I have been married for almost 30 years. To say this is out of character for him is an understatement. Nothing like this has ever happened before. And fortunately, we were both drinking too much, she says, on New Year's Eve, and things got out of control on both sides. We've talked this through as a family and apologized to each other. She says, I just hope people will respect our privacy for the sake of our kids. In the club, too. Pow, pow. Um, got about, what, 15, 17 more minutes left in our power hour today? Oh, I was reading this, too. Extreme music. Check this out. Like punk, heavy metal, death metal, emo, and screamo can have a positive calming effect on anger, according to a study. The findings may surprise those who are not regular headbangers or, according to the story, that's what they call them, people who like you know, rock music. Instead of becoming more aggressive, listening to music like this calmed and inspired the extreme music fan. So how do you feel when you're listening to heavy metal, death metal, emo? Does it make you feel okay? Make sure you're listening to The Planet then. Make sure you're checking that out. Make sure you're checking out our two new shows as well. Seth bringing his local rock show now called Louisiana Loud Hour or just The Loud Hour, but kind of branded with his Louisiana Loud company. So local rock music uh, will be played from 6 until 7 every Sunday night here on The Planet. And then if you like metal, Ty brought his show, The Grindhouse, to the planet. That's from 8 until 10 every Sunday night. So you may be listening to those shows on the radio for many years. They're now living on the planet. Uh, Seth has a different name, but same time and same great shows. This right here, okay, maybe you have a job interview coming up, looking to get a new job this, this 2023, this new year. According to Gillette, now, you know, they're in the, in the skincare business, but they say your next job interview could tank if you don't have a manicure. That goes for both women and men. 60% of the human resource professionals polled say appearance is important and that job applicants should groom their fingernails before an interview. I mean, are, are you getting judged for your, your fingernails while you're on a job interview? I, I guess you are. How am I looking today? Am I looking pretty good? I, I, I cut mine the other day. Hey, I, got, I mean, it's not, not perfect, but I mean, would, I, would you hire me? If you're watching this morning, would you hire me due to my fingernails? Hope so. John says Dana has been on the gas recently. Apparently so. Also, wanted to share this video with you. This one, <laughs> this one is going viral. J.J. McCar uh, McCarthy, quarterback for Michigan. His he was in the crowd for their uh, for their recent game, and his son throws a touchdown and he celebrates, and reportedly. The young lady next to him is his son's girlfriend. And he he catches a feel of this girl's backside. And he's going viral for it. Watch. Oh my God. Kind of kind of very, very discreetly, right? That's kind of that's kind of icky right there. Oh, there you go. Oh, oh, like, oh, 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 o
kind of icky, huh? Kind of icky, kind of kind of iffy. So he just kind of like rubs his finger. Not, I mean, not like, not a lot. If you're listening, it's it's not a lot. But he kind of just rubs his finger on the back, and then he kind of like backhand taps her on the backside. Something going on with Pops and his son's girlfriend, or maybe Pops is weird like that. I, I kind of strange, but but that's a viral video, which I'm sure you can see if you search for that today and you wanna you wanna check it out for yourself. But yesterday, two great games for Louisiana teams when it came to football, college football. Tulane scores 16 points late in the game to win the Cotton Bowl. 46-45, they beat USC. There was a long replay. Uh, reading this story from KETC.com, it's also an AP story. Alex Bauman knew right away he had scored probably the biggest touchdown in two-lane history. Even after the true freshman's tight end's Six-yard catch at the end of the Cotton Bowl was initially ruled incomplete. He says, I kept my hands under the ball. The long replay review proved Bauman made the catch with nine seconds left. Even with linebacker Aaron Gentry draped over him as they rolled over in the end zone. That capped a frantic finish for the 14th-ranked Green Wave. 46-45 win over Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams in the number eight team USC yesterday. Tulane quarterback says, if you told us before the game that we had one drive, one opportunity to go down there and win the game, then we take that 10 out of 10 times. The Green Wave scored 16 points in the final four minutes and seven seconds. The game-winning touchdown coming after they got the ball back following a safety to complete an FBS record 10-win turnaround after going 2-10 and last season. Coach Fritz said, huge win for the program, huge win for the university, huge win for the city, and it was. Tulane, got to watch out for Tulane, man. They, they got in the top 25, had some big wins this season. Williams, uh, 37 for 52 passing, 460 yards, a Cotton Bowl record, five touchdowns. Dang. But they lost. Um, a... Says the Green Wave played in their most significant bowl since the Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day in 1940, when they were still in the Southeastern Conference, and it was their biggest bowl win since the 1935 Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Cool. What a great win for Tulane, though. Big, big win. Kind of put them on the map. And then yesterday, LSU beats the pants off of Purdue. That was kind of embarrassing for Purdue. I watched some of the game. I was working. <laughs> uh, not sure who says that. Time to get some Tulane swag. Harvard of the South. <laughs> I see you coming up as Facebook user, but thanks for the comment. Um, 63-7 to seven yesterday, LSU's win. Malik Neighbors threw for a touchdown, caught a touchdown, had 163 yards receiving. I think even the water boy got in to play at quarterback yesterday. They, they took him back to the uh, locker room, put a jersey on him, some pads, and sent him back out. But I think what everyone got in, Daniels, Nussmeyer, Walker Howard got in at the end. I mean, it, it just, it just, it was not pretty for Purdue. But we said this yesterday, Purdue was, they're, they're depleted, no coach. Drew Brees didn't help. I'm not sure if Drew Brees just did it as a kind gesture, really. Knowing that they needed some help. Not sure if Drew's going to do it again. I think he's going to go coaches. His kids, 
As he said yesterday, they had him mic'd up yesterday, and after the game, after the bowl game, he was going to go and, and coach his kids. Maybe, maybe that's where Drew needs to stay. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blaming the two-lane loss on Drew on two-lane loss on Drew Brees at all. I'm I'm not. But Drew Brees coach, don't think so. Drew Brees analyst, don't think so. Quarterback, high school coach, maybe. And also yesterday, um, there was a scary injury in the Purdue LSU game. Purdue receiver Deion Burks took a scary hit and had his head stabilized. He was loaded onto a stretcher, carted off the field, and taken to Orlando Regional Medical Center. He had a thumbs up on the way uh, off the field, and Purdue officials told ABC reporters that he had movement in his extremities. So Kayshawn Booty, there were some rumors going around that that dude was part of a sex party, I think with some other coaches too. Don't know how true that is. He didn't play yesterday. He declared for the draft. Maybe that's why he declared for the draft. Um, Tigers were without several players, though. But not as much as Purdue. And again, all that came down after their bid for the bowl. Uh, like Purdue. And, and I guess, you know, there's a lot of bowls, man. There's way too many. There's a shag carpet bowl and the sheetrock bowl. And there's a lot, or there are a lot of bowls. There are too many. You know, then you got players declaring, don't want to play in the bowl game. Just seems water, like watered down a bit because there's, there's so many. Purdue just had 17 first downs yesterday. LSU had 27 first downs yesterday. Six of seven were in the red zone. LSU plays Florida State in Orlando on September 3rd to start the season. Purdue hosts Fresno State on September 2nd. So LSU looking to get some redemption in Orlando. Taking on Florida State to kick off the season. LSU fans, you ready? Right? Can LSU win that first game of the season next year? And which which team? Uh, guys were absolutely Hang on, let me let me hit play again. Hey Purdue. What happened? You got your asses kicked by the University of LSU. Go Tigers. I'm a boy about it. The University of Louisiana State University. What happened? He got his hat, his shirt, little blinking belt buckle dude, got some helmets in the back. He's in his little man cave. That might be his living room. What happened? Got beat by the University of Louisiana State University. What happened? You got your asses kicked. By the University of LSU. Go Tigers. And he kind of he backs up, kind of you know, puts his chest out, opens his arms, like what, what? Congratulations, LSU, on that win. Congratulations, big win. Purdue didn't need to be in that game yesterday. No head coach, no other coaches depleted. All that. But, I mean, they couldn't say, no, we're not coming after getting a bid to that bowl. But they got beat by the University of Louisiana State University. Also, this was kind of circulating yesterday on social media. We got five minutes left inside the power hour. Jay Glazer, NFL insider, do we call him that, says the Broncos would back up the Brinks truck for Sean Payton. Now, Jay Glazer, Sean Payton, they're considered friends. They're together on the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show each week. You think there's any truth to that? Say they don't go to the coordinator route. They want someone with experience who is established. Certainly a guy like Sean Payton, they back up the Brinks truck. That's according to Jay Glazer.
And you said that during a segment on Sunday. And he looked around the studio and said, where's Sean? He's around here somewhere. You hear that, Sean? They'll back up the Brinks truck for him. Brinks truck, that's the, uh, the armored truck that brings the money around. Glazier added that, yes, the Broncos and any other team looking to hire Sean Payton needs to trade draft pick compensation to the Saints who own the coaching rights through 2024. Denver can almost match any other offer. They sent star pass rusher Bradley Chubb to the Dolphins at the midseason trade line in exchange for a 2023 first-round pick from the San Francisco 49ers. The Broncos also own all of their picks in the, in the 2024 draft's first four rounds. They can compete with any offer. Broncos, they got new owner, a new ownership, one of the wealthiest in the NFL, headlined by Walmart Air Rob Walton. I did the freaking Walton. <laughs> Waltons own the Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah, some Walmart money. Jake plays an issue. Another week or two before coach kicks in. Yeah, and they'll make a pretty, a pretty, they'll make a pretty big deal over that. You know, the coaching carousel. They one team in. Dude. They back up the Walmart truck. Back up the Brinks truck for. Sean Payton, don't know. Sean Payton back in New Orleans, don't think so. But, man, you know, as a coach that's been there for a long time, or just in any other coach, any other team, when, when you change the culture, you take them to the end, you one of the strongest teams together, under watch, you have success step down and then you see it i'm not gonna say the saints fell apart that that's a little rough they just don't have it together sean payton sees that like how do you feel you know to see your team go downhill something that you work very hard for but then again you know what was the real reason that sean payton stepped down like the real real reason not the reason we were given the real real reason like, did he, did he see that coming? You know, did he, did he see a, a team that maybe he couldn't coach? I, I don't, I don't know. But I feel Sean Payton will end up somewhere next season. I just hope that we, the Saints, don't get screwed over whatever happens with Sean Payton. I hope we don't get screwed. But that's going to wrap it up. Our Planet Power Hour for today, December, not December, what's wrong with me? January 3rd, 2023. Power Hour, we talk about the headlines and stories of the day. We'll do it again tomorrow at 8 a.m. You can listen on The Planet, the online station for 90s and 2000s rock. Listen to theplanet.com. Download the app, search, listen to The Planet. Also, if you go to the website, we have other ways you can listen. We have, uh, we're on the iHeart platform, TuneIn Radio, Alexa. You can enable the Planet Online skill. Then say, Alexa, play the Planet Online. Make sure you say that. And you can listen to us there. And you can watch along every weekday morning at 8. Uh, Chris Logan page, Planet page, Chris Logan Facebook group. And don't forget, we got the YouTube channel set up too. If you want to go watch previous episodes, they're all there. Got Spotify set up, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can listen and you can watch previous episodes through that as well. Search for uh, the Planet Power Hour with Chris Logan and you can subscribe. Boom, done. So I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. We'll have our Wednesday show at 8. I'll start at 7 on the planet, though. Have a great rest of your day today and stay dry. See you.